I did not have money. I was managing myself at that time because I didn't really have a job. No, that really I entered into the Uber. I didn't know where the tears came from. I just started crying. I felt like I was suffering. I felt like my world was over. <laughs> Hi guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> so guys this topic today is something that you are definitely kind of used to and then majority of the creators always make these videos like as soon as they land or maybe three months after but for me yeah i have decided to make my own videos one year later why because i believe that it's after one year you really really have a full understanding of all of these things and it's actually right to talk about so yeah my name remains Bola Olapode and I share videos on my lifestyle and my reality I share videos on the things that I have learned in the UK and my life in the UK in general and if these things interest you this is the right time for you to subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you're a returning subscriber I love you very much you keep me going and please keep it up continue to share my videos and like my video one year later guys and i've spent one year in this amazing and wonderful city country and definitely if you're coming from nigeria in africa and you're moving into a country in europe definitely you're going to experience some cultural shocks that you are not used to we have so many different ways that we, we live in nigeria there are different things that we experience in nigeria there are different things that we say in nigeria that cannot be said here that cannot be experienced here and i'm here to give you some of the things that i have noticed myself i think i have enough experience to come online to come and tell you guys culture shocks i'm going to give you my own personal experiences so these are culture shocks that pertains to me and they are all in my own opinion this is not to say that it is what you're going to experience but this is my own personal opinion and how i've experienced it so i'm telling you this now so that when you're coming you know what to expect and you are able to come with the mindset to expect these things and also adapt to them so i have written down all of these things that i've experienced so far because i realized i need to keep track i didn't want to miss anything out so i have my second phone here with me i have my second phone here with me why well, I have written everything down? Yay! I fixed my second phone. Yeah, it was so bad for a very, very long time. It, it got spoiled in May. Yeah, last year May, and I fixed it just last month. Ooh, I am excited. Yeah, so I have written them down. I'll be writing this since I think July of last year. Yes, it's not a lot, but these are things that I believe that when you come, you'll be, you'll be finding really, really strange. Uh, number one of these drugs is the weather. Hmm. Guys, I came into the UK in March. I think I was beginning of spring and you know how you expect spring to have a mix of sun and wind and everything but when i came into the uk i think five days after guys in one day in one day i experienced spring i experienced winter i experienced fall i experienced <laughs> i experienced summer it was that crazy but before i came to the uk a lot of people used to complain about the london weather like ah uk weather is unpredictable uk weather is this uk weather is that when i came to the uk i experienced this first time what did i mean by that that day yeah i went out to buy something with my husband and we left the house it was very cloudy and windy okay maybe that's the typical spring weather fine we got to the store it was sunny i'm like where did this sun come from like the the wind ceased then it became really sunny i'm like how okay we left now next thing we came out of the store we were walking it began to snow how a few minutes later right there when it was snowing it began to rain guys it was so crazy it was overwhelming i'm like what did they happen what did they stop in nigeria the highest you can get in one day is sun and rain that's all and after that everything is normal but you see this day was so windy it was so sunny it was snowing and then it was raining so these are the kind of things that you would experience so that you can come and say ah the uk weather oh, is very unpredictable so what what i have done to sustain myself with these weather changes is to check the weather forecast and then sometimes weather forecast can forecast you can can surprise you <laughs> but then it's always very good to check the weather forecast to know what to prepare for and then to dress accordingly another thing about the weather is that there is, is, is as if there are different times in the uk there's a particular period in time when the sun only sets 
around 11 p.m. So I am telling you that the sun will, would like it to be very, very clear. Seal past 10. <laughs> Guys, when it was happening, I was like, ah. For Nigeria, we we'll say, sorry, I'm speaking in Pidgin English. This is our English in Nigeria. We we'll be saying by 7 p.m. like this, they were done, they black. They were done. <laughs> so when I first experienced it, it was extremely fascinating. Like, ah, they, there's like, like everywhere is just so bright at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. was really bright. It would be as if you are, you, it is 2 p.m. So it was like that. And then it was only that for about three to four hours in the midnight. And then by 4 a.m., everywhere is bright again. The sun is out. I mean, 4 a.m. Yes, it was that serious. And then there's another part in the UK. <laughs> no, another time in the UK when it gets dark at 2 p.m. <laughs> You guys see when they say UK weather is not consistent, like it is actually really not consistent. Like it gets dark at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and then it's dark all oh, until like 9 a.m. Then 9 a.m. you now see the sun. Then from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. the sun is out. 2 p.m. again is dark. <laughs> guys, the, the weather is actually really, really confused. So when I first came now, I used to work in support, and I see them saying they want to eat dinner at 5 p.m. I'm like any pay is okay what's happening so it was when i saw that the like the day gets dark at 2 p.m sometimes i realized that ah, it's actually an ideal time to eat by 5 p.m for this guy so that they know that the idea is over and then they go to bed oh um, my for nigerian now anytime <laughs> fine i know the best time to have dinner is around 7 p.m is fine but in the night the work life of nigeria doesn't permit everyone sorry why is this air doesn't permit everyone to eat at that time. So when you now go to a place and they are all eating at 5 p.m., sometimes you have to just eat at 5 p.m. p.m. So, but me when I get a mom, I go see find something to eat. So yeah, that's it about the weather. The weather is really, really unpredictable. And just, you know, it's, it's something that you're going to get used to, fine. But then it's always good to know these things before. Number two that shocked me was the cars that these people drive for Uber guys in nigeria now you guys know like the highest you will see is maybe one classy toyota one of these toyota brands like that's the highest you will see in nigeria but in the uk yeah <sighs> um, well, there's no car where you know go see for uber like you like there's no car you won't see the, as an uber car like there is no one i have entered bmw entered mercedes i have entered one of these luxurious cars I have entered Ford, I have entered Audi. <laughs> hey guys, it is okay. Uber life is premium life. I'm a big girl. There was one time I entered this Mercedes van, like it was so cute. There were lights in the in the van like this, and I had to take a picture. <laughs> I had to take a picture because it was just so cute. But in Nigeria, if you see anybody coming to carry you with BMW, hey, you run for your life because you're not sure say <laughs> your life is safe. So that's out because of our insecurity, blah blah blah. You guys understand what I'm trying to say, right? So because of the insecurity we have in Nigeria, if you see big cars like that coming to carry you, you say you don't want to enter, you cancel the ride because <clears throat> God are there go. <laughs> God are there go. That's the next thing. But here in the UK, please, there's nothing like God are there. Your security is like number one. They they, they even value their own lives and everything more than you. They don't even care about you. They care about their money and everything. So nobody's going to carry you away. So if you if you're here in the UK and you're seeing big cars, just enter and live your life. Even you start picture say, no one is gonna beat you. <laughs> I go for that into this video. I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, Teddy Blake New York. Of you guys are amazing. I don't know if you guys remember that I got a bag from Teddy Blake last year, and I am here to give you guys a review of this bag. I have had this bag for six months, guys. Just take a look at this amazingness. It is an Italian leather bag, like premium italian leather bag if you are a sucker for premium goods if you are a sucker for luxurious goods i think it is time for you to shop teddy blake new york teddy blake is having a spring sales currently and you can get as much as 45 percent discount that's amazing that is like <laughs> so i am urging you right now if you are a lover of luxury if luxury resonates with you this is the best time for you to shop your own teddy blake new york bag you should just use the link in my description box and then you 45 percent is yours and then if you miss the sale don't worry don't fret don't be afraid you can still get 30 percent off your first order if you use the same link in my bio so teddy blake new york just go let me let me just give you guys a tour of this bag i use this bag to school i think 
a week ago yes it was just one week ago and who would believe that this bag has actually been in use six months guys six months like this guy these guys they know what they are doing so and then they have like seriously amazing design so i think it's best time for you to shop your own teddy blake don't forget shop teddy blake new york <laughs> another thing that has shocked me in the uk is i don't know if i should call it fake smile but honestly it's just fake smile i mean you're just walking on the road and your eye your you 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 make eye contact with someone that you don't know from adam you guys are just walking and then you guys your eyes meet you have to just like <laughs> like they'll just smile at you like this and i'm like means i'm like so let us be giving ourselves a fake smile because i don't even know where why why you have to smile at me like just go your way let me go my way but then when they smile at me i just feel weird if i don't smile back so means i'll smile back and the, the thing that is actually very funny is the fact that you may just like this so no let me do it you may just smile like this their face goes back straight like so he's actually not sincere it's actually not, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything so why are you smiling at me just go your way in nigeria like this they call it do not i can't share if you are okay everybody they go their own you are not saying you not send me you go your own you go your own well yeah when you when somebody's eyes jamming like this default mode just smile in fact me now eh these days if i'm going on the road before the person smile me i already smiled because i know that that's where it's going to end so get ready to start smiling start polishing your smile start shining your teeth do your teeth to be white <laughs> i am just joking guys but i'm just saying like that's just how we hit here like if you're working on the road and just see somebody you don't have to know the person you just smile it's a form of courtesy i think to them so that's just one of the things that i found very fascinating and shocking because nobody nobody send you in Nigeria. Yeah, this thing is something i know that a lot of people have spoken about and i don't think there's anything wrong with it if you understand that this is their lifestyle so um in the uk yeah they are very very good with endearment see even if they don't like you they'll still give you endearment oh sorry babe sorry love hi my darling hi my lovely how you doing love hi <sighs> i don't know how they do it but it's just in their subconscious to be very very nice to people like no no they're they not necessarily nice like to speak nicely to people and politely to people even if they are trying to sob you when i mean sob you know what i mean yeah sob you they will sob you politely but in that sob you go you will know hey, hey, this person don't sob me so just shine your eyes well, well and so that you know when to know if this person is serious and, and if the person is not serious and please don't take it to art it, it, see after the speech that's where it ends it is it is a surface level thing for them they call every even their friends their family everyone on the road and they, and you say oh hi darling they can do that so don't take it too serious it's in nigeria when somebody say oh, oh you're so cute oh i love you all those kind of things you take out this actually means it but yeah i'm sorry to say but i don't see any atom of seriousness in all of those endearments so if you are a kind of person that is very emotional please kill their emotions when you are coming to deal with general public here in the uk and then when they start giving you the endearment they are not putting it in your head because it's not in their head so don't let it be in your head another thing about your politeness is the fact that in the uk yeah you know when you're entering like probably anywhere and then you just open the door you close it after you here in the uk if they actually see that somebody is coming after them yeah they will leave the door open for the person to come it's something that is just it's just an imbued thing even a child already knows that this is, this is something this is the right thing to do so even me now i am like i am 100 percent used to it i'm not i'm not used to saying dear lovely all those things it's not my own mother tongue not my lifestyle <laughs> why it is needed i will say it. if it's not needed why am i saying it but when it comes to opening the door and leaving it open for the next person coming behind me i always do that but if there's no, no one behind me i shut the door after me so this is a very good thing i feel like it just makes them acknowledge you as a human being and not just some something you get but if like, anybody send you you open as i'm even opening the door i just the door and jams on it <laughs> on its own but here in the uk it's not like Nothing that that's shocking is paying for nylon when i came to the uk oh when we first when we went to i think it was asda or tesco and everything and then we finished buying i asked for a bag they just told me 10 pence and i ah and this will only bag will my pay <laughs> all right uh -uh. chill it's poly bag like 
Pull it back now. You don't even need to like talk too much. They've already given you a shop price. They're giving you in all these things. But here in the UK, we go to all these big, big shops. So you will pay for your nylon, though. So get ready. Don't think that they want to dash nylon. They're not going to dash nylon. Except for these roadside shops, like not proper, proper, 100% grocery shops. But you see the big ones like Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's, Aldi, all these ones, you pay for the bag. But if you're on the, like, for my streets now, there's no way on my street that will pay for nylon. They will give you all these normal, normal soft nylon. But you see all those other ones that have branded bags? You have to pay for the bag. Yeah, so get ready. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked that you're going to be paying for nylon. Another thing that you shouldn't get tired of is that they will use, are you okay? Are you all right? Are you okay, mate? How are you, mate? To kill you in the UK. <laughs> like, that's just a fact. So if you really just somebody, you two can just say, are you okay? Are you all right? All those kind of things. So this is their own way of saying hi, hello, uh, you know, their own way of saying how far. Yes, that is it. So you know the way you greet your guys now, how far, how are you, oh, ah, everything is okay, oh. Say, are you alright? Are you okay? What's up, mate? Hi, mate. What's... They'll, just, they'll just try to make it very tosh and very delicious in your ear. But then, like I said, it doesn't really go above the surface level. So guys, these other shocks that I'm going to talk about now are the ones that I've experienced in the workplace, workplace shocks. Number one, because I'm saying this one because this is what I have seen where I've, in places I have worked. So if it is different from your own place or wherever you go, fine. But this is my own experience and you should also try and expect it when you come to the UK to start working. Number one is the smoke break. <laughs> I know it's funny. Okay, first of all, yeah, don't be surprised when you see people smoking on the road anyhow. I know it's not in our culture in Nigeria for you to see anybody just, everybody is smoking. Everybody smoking on the street, wherever you go. But in the UK, yeah, it is normal. It is a normal stuff. They smoke cigarette, they smoke every other thing. They smoke vape, they smoke, they smoke, smoke. Everything smoky, they smoky here in the uk and you would you would see it freely on the roadside like everywhere as you're walking you see it so don't be surprised about that i know we don't have that culture in nigeria but it is something that they do not mind here in the uk so please don't be shocked don't be too shocked when you see that but the one that really really shocked me is when you're working you are at a company and you all have the same one hour break fine you do the one hour the other person does the one hour and these people are liable to go outside more than as many times as they want for a smoke break i'm like and this smoke break does not count in the one hour general break so you know that you do not smoke you don't have the liability you don't have the freedom to go and do anyhow do your smoke. i mean i don't think it's fair honestly because we all have the same one hour break so why do you still have to go smoke break five minutes like 20 times in a day like i'm not exaggerating i have actually seen 20 times but not some people no it's not everyone that, that smoke that much but then at least five times in a day you've gone out for 10 minutes five minutes different smoke break what is that <laughs> so this is something that if you start working in the uk and you're, you're looking for your colleague and then you ask somebody else and they say oh no she's gonna have for a fag that's what they call it smoke fag she's gonna have for a fag don't be surprised that's a fag break you have to wait there's nothing you can do about it you cannot report it it is a way of life it is how they are here that's the way they do their thing so for you that you don't smoke after your one hour break you don't have any other extra break where you can have pee break <laughs> so yeah that's another shock that should be expected another shocking thing that i've experienced in the workplace is how much the British people love tea and coffee. There's a, you know in Nigeria now, if you are using bon vita, you are using milo, you call it tea. You are using, anything you are shat drinking is tea. But here in the UK, there's a difference between tea and coffee. Tea is when you are using lip tin, all those kind of tea bags, top tea. Nigerian, you know now. <laughs> yeah, that is what they call tea and coffee. Everybody knows coffee. So it's as if they are obsessed with tea and coffee. Like I have worked in support homes and everything. So I already, I've already interacted with these people a lot and i have seen how much they love tea i have seen how, <laughs> how much they love coffee here in the uk so a british man does not joke with his tea or his coffee depending on their preference so like you guys can actually drink tea multiple amounts of times in a day and there's nothing wrong about it like there's a particular person that i've worked with that as soon as she's finishing 
one cup of tea she's getting another one i am not even joking so they really 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 love tea you know in nigeria yeah, if you are not taking bread if you are not if it's not serious serious i don't i don't know if you, any one of us actually drink tea like that and then we only think that tea is for breakfast it's only morning that i can drink tea almost for yeah they drink tea at any time they don't there's nothing like breakfast or whatever tea is a drink that they can drink at any time of the day as they like so do not be surprised when you probably working in a setting where you have to serve the residents food and then the person has asked you for tea like 10 times in one day don't be surprised it is just a thing that they are used to taking in the workplace another thing that i have come to learn is that no one really really is your friend when it comes to working in the uk yeah i mean you can think that because you guys are laughing and you guys are chilling you guys have gisted like three hours in one day the person is not your friend no they are not your friend like after you leave that place that is the end like there is nothing like deeply rooted friendship or whatever they come to work and they they treat you as their colleague and that is it so when you are working in the uk do not think that you have a friend in someone just like that no it takes in fact, if i don't even know how to explain it but don't don't see yourself being friends with these people beyond the workplace after the workplace once you leave that door that's the end of that relationship for them so i know in nigeria you and your colleagues are everybody even they, you go to bat together to go and enjoy life and everything it's not like that here so don't take your conversation with these people that you work with so seriously because it doesn't go beyond that and 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 it is possible that you can get snitched on so when you're also conversing be very very careful the kind of things that you say be very very careful how you address these people they are very sensitive and then if you say something that doesn't sit down with them it can escalate there was a time things that we say in nigeria as a joke doesn't mean joke does it doesn't mean it's a joke to them there was a time that i i was just saying my normal laughing stuff and joking stuff me i'm a very very playful person <laughs> person and i spoke this thing to my colleague that i thought we were very cool and she went to report me to the manager it wasn't a good experience like i've had so many experiences that this one was not a very good experience and it really really dealt with me and it made me come to the realization that no man is your friend when it comes to being here no matter how friendly no matter how much laughs you guys have had together be very very careful on the things that you say if if you know that the kinds of things you say to your people in nigeria make them laugh think about it well because there are a lot of laws a lot of things that they take very very seriously here and doesn't mean serious to us so just be very careful and understand the workplace culture of wherever you are going before you begin to show your your true colors like when i mean true colors your playfulness and everything just understand how these people work before you go and call your kata so be very very careful again again these british people they don't know how to keep gossip <laughs> they don't know how to keep gossip so please be very very careful don't go and think that oh this guy because he's my guy you think he's your guy and then you go and tell him something very confidential see that confidential gist can just become office gist in a matter of yes that's it so be very careful in nigeria we know nigeria now now they we back up each other like normal levels we know who is for you know who they for you that's like in a basic term you know who they for you but yeah you don't know who they for you so be very careful the kind of things and gist that you spill because they don't keep gossip to them like they don't you know, it's, to them it's not gossip to them it's gist they will just say it to you it's something that you are keeping personal to yourself or something and then to them it's gist they are sharing it around with their friends oh have you heard how are they and that's how your gist to spread so please be very very careful it's not like giving your full gist here or you have to be very careful the kind of information the other thing that you should know in the uk here is that their accent you know for me i understood this is that you know how yoruba is how Igbo language is i know so you Igbo people don't attack me yet please calm down Igbo language is that there are different kind of ways that they speak Igbo. there are different kind of ways that we speak yoruba a person from ijebu is speaking yoruba a person from oyo is speaking yoruba but they are not sounding the same so that's the same thing here in the uk a person in from Leicester here does not sound the same as the person from Birmingham. That is just the truth. The person from Birmingham doesn't sound like the person in Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, so there are accents. So don't be surprised when you are not hearing the British English that you're already used to on the television. No, it's not like that. It's not a general language. It, everything is English, but there, there, there are just variations to it. The way it sounds, the way they speak it, 
the way they stop like you some people like they appear sorry i don't know how to do this thing <laughs> i don't know how to do it i don't know how to do it maybe we'll try so don't, don't don't be don't be scared oh yeah there was, there was this interesting person i met i went to work one day and i met this person from stoke on trend and her accent was so so fascinating I'm like do you want the water oh my god oh why are you doing that hi oh that was how she was sounding and then when i went to work in birmingham one time and then they were just sounding extremely different from that girl and it's just like very mind-blowing and interesting that oh these people don't actually speak the same english so don't be surprised when you are in a gathering of british people and then five of them probably have I mean, five people and five of them are not speaking the same english they're probably not from the same city so yes english as accent the final <laughs> one that i want to talk about and this one actually made me cry because i was not used to the system then i was very very new in this city and it really really hurt me because i i thought that i was very intellectual not to make that kind of mistake so this is regarding like busing station and, and getting your buses so this day i was going to work and there was a bus stop that i had to go to and get this particular number of bus and when i got to the bus stop i took an uber actually because i was i didn't want to miss the bus when i got to the bus stop i realized that there were two bus stops facing each other so they actually they were actually the same name because of course they are the same spot but they are on the opposite side so i'm going to be using left and right so that it doesn't confuse anyone so my uber dropped me on the right of the bus stop and i stood there and then i realized that oh maybe because i was seeing how the buses were going the cars were going i'm like my intellectual now told me that oh let me go on the left because i think that this bus is going to go through the left side so i i crossed over to the other side and i was waiting apparently my bus was delayed and i didn't know that i didn't even know where to check because i was very very new then i think that was like three weeks after i got the, into the uk so i was still there i was there i was waiting for the bus the bus was delayed i didn't know where to check it wasn't updated on the google map see this google map map thing here can actually cause you trouble sometimes so i i stayed on the left side of the road and i was waiting i didn't see so i now saw the same bus coming on the right side of the, of the road i saw the number i ran i crossed the road and then i entered into the bus guys i was already getting late if i missed that bus i was going to get very late to my workplace and i didn't want to do that because they pay hourly yes yeah, so and i didn't have money yes yeah, very importantly i did not have money i was managing myself at that time because i didn't really have a job no that wasn't three weeks after because we got jobs i think one month one month after we came so like six weeks thereabout so i entered the bus on the right and we were going and then i was looking through the window and then i now saw the same bus on the left going towards the actual correct direction and then i highlighted from the bus i ran guys i ran with every energy that i had in me <laughs> but i didn't meet that bus guys i was so i was so pained because i was actually staying on the right side before before i went to the other side and this bus was delayed it was not updated on the google map it really really pained me and then i had to buy a train ticket which was extremely expensive and then so i, I would not miss that train i took an uber from that place to the train station guys really i entered into the uber i didn't know where the tears came from i just started crying i felt like i was suffering i felt like my world was over <laughs> no like you guys i don't know how to explain it like you are broke you are trying to manage and then you actually actually got to the bus stop pretty early so i don't miss the bus and then i entered the wrong bus and then i tried to meet the right bus i missed it the money i was trying to save i couldn't save it i got to the train station my train was delayed guys it was one of my worst days ever when i first got to the uk my advice is that when you come to the uk and you are going anywhere check the map very well i'm also trying to download the application of the bus that you are using so that you can know if the bus is delayed or not and also try and ask people around so it was because i didn't really ask so much questions in fact there was nobody to ask because it was like an expressway where the bus stop um, is so i couldn't ask so that's the end of my story yeah it was a story so these are the things that have surprised me in the uk so far so if you are coming to the uk these are the kind of things you should expect do not be surprised do not be shocked and i hope with this few points of mine i have been able to tell you the kind of things you want to hear <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget i share videos on my lifestyle and my reality and things that i experienced here in the uk watch out for my next video because i'm very sure you're going to love it and i will see you in my next video